Hello, Archie Dunlop here with Talking Astrology with Archie on Tuesday, March the 12th, 2024. Venus is now in Pisces and I wanted to take this opportunity to consider what it actually means for Venus to be in Pisces, especially from the perspective of natal astrology. So if someone has got Venus in Pisces in their horoscope, yeah, what does it mean? There are always two ways to look at meaning in astrology. Uh, one approach is, is theoretical. You, you have a concept. You know, Venus is um, exalted in Pisces. Um, that's what you know, the textbooks say. That's what traditional astrology says. I mean, both East and West. And also, you know, Pisces is a water sign. And so you can sort of build up that meaning and you can sort of look at a look at a book, look up Venus and Pisces, see what it means. Another approach uh, is to be more empirical about it, to look at um, a number of horoscopes with Venus and Pisces in it, uh, which have Venus and Pisces in them. And so to get an idea for sort of, I don't know, you could look at a dozen famous people and see um, how that works. So that's really what I want to do um, to do today. I want to look at some you know, famous people, um, George Washington, Osama bin Laden, um, George Harrison, Victoria Beckham, um, Jeffrey Epstein. You know, they all have Venus in Pisces. And of course, they reflect very different uh, experiences of Venus in Pisces. And so what I'm doing is I'm looking at it uh, from a perspective of what possibilities are there with Venus in Pisces. Of course, we're looking at these people, you know, with 2020 hindsight. Um, but I think it's a useful exercise uh, because when we look at a horoscope, perhaps not of a famous person, uh, with Venus in Pisces, uh, we get an idea about the possibilities uh, in terms of how it manifests. Having said all that, I think there is something rather unsatisfactory about looking at um, the position of a planet in a sign. I think it's less satisfactory from looking at an aspect. You know, I've done a video in the past where I've looked at you know, Mars square Jupiter. Mars square Jupiter is a very dynamic aspect which has quite a specific um, meaning or interpretation. I think when you're looking at a planet in a sign, whether it's, I don't know, Sun in Libra, <laughs> Venus in Pisces, uh, Mars in Aquarius, it is more general, I, I believe, than an aspect um, it doesn't have any context. So I think I think that is the problem uh, with what I'm doing. So when you we look at these individual charts, uh, we, we're trying to look at the context. And I think you always have to consider the context um, when looking at a planet in a sign. OK, it's a planet in a sign. I mean, that's true, certainly, with as planets in aspect as well. But I think with planets in, sci in signs, it's even more important um, to uh, consider the context. And of course, one must never, ever look at a planet in a sign in isolation. Well, indeed, one mustn't look at any single uh, configuration in, in, in isolation. You know, you've got Venus in Pisces, you must be like this. You've got Mars square Jupiter, you must be like this. You've got to look at the context not just of the person's biography, but also the context of their chart. You know, what other, what other things are going on in that chart? What other things are linked, um, um, you know, with that, you know, Venus in Pisces? Is, is, in as, is it in aspect to anything? Or is it not in aspect to anything? That can also be important. But uh, before I look at Venus in Pisces, I want to look at the astrology and the I Ching for today which is Tuesday, March the 12th, 2024. So here is a chart for today, as usual, set for noon uh, on Tuesday, March the 12th, set for noon, noon in New York. Um, there we've got the sort of top right, 
load of people with Venus in Pisces. You probably recognize them all. There's Victoria Beckham on top right. There's Jeffrey Epstein and Osama bin Laden and George Harrison and George Washington. So uh, the moon continues to be in Aries. Um, moon in Aries is quite an assertive placement for the moon. Um, it's about how we want to express ourselves emotionally. We're not um, we're not really prepared to just keep our feelings to ourselves. We want other people to actually know how we feel. I think that is going to be important in many cases. Um, so it is quite dynamic, uh, especially as today the moon makes a sextile to Mars. You see, there's a moon in Aries and it's sextile Mars. So moon Mars sextile can represent fortunate activity. Um, activity that perhaps involves a certain amount of thinking because Mars is in Aquarius, but not too much thinking. And so, for, you know, many of us, we are going to be able to apply ourselves relatively easy, relatively easily. Uh, it's a sextile. I mean, sextiles tend to be a fortunate aspect. They require a little bit of effort, but not the effort of a square. They're not as dynamic and trouble. The, you know, the, the sextile aspect is not as dynamic and troublesome as a square. So yes, um, we can. Um, we we should be able to make our mark. Um, but we might find that in terms of how we communicate, especially verbally, there may be a little more friction. Reason being that uh, Mercury, the communication planet, uh, there it is, uh, where's Mercury gone? Mercury for Aries, uh, is semi-square Uranus. So semi-squares are a dynamic aspect. Remember, that's one-eighth of a circle. Um, it's... Um, a square but halved so it's like it's you know a square is an eighth of a circle sorry a semi-square is an eighth of a circle eight that's four times two that's a very um troublesome thing we know we've got to make we've got to really make the effort um we are aware of conflict as we um as we try to communicate so the words can come out they can come flying out but they might get a reaction. I don't think people are just going to take what we say at face value, not necessarily. And even if we don't say anything, our, our thoughts could be um, all over the place. Um, remember, Mercury is not just semi-square um, Uranus. It is Mercury in Aries semi-square Uranus. So Mercury in Aries is... Um, um, very forthright. Mercury in Aries likes to say what's on its mind. Um, it doesn't like to hide its feelings. And of course, this is you know, Mercury is in Aries at the same time as Moon is being is in Aries. Okay, Moon and Mer Moon, the, the Moon and Mercury may not be in aspect with each other, um, but they are in the same sign. And yeah, Mercury semi square Uranus that that can cause. Um, a bit of a bit of conflict, and as it says, agitation uh, today, sort of mental agitation, especially if we feel we can't get our message out into the open. So I think it is important that we find a way of expressing ourselves, um, but we have to get the balance right. Uh, if we ex if we express ourselves in a very impulsive way, then there is a danger that we cause um, a, fair, a fair amount of chaos. Now, it is true that the moon is in Aries, but uh, from a North American or indeed an American perspective in general, this evening, uh, the moon does go into Taurus. Again, if you're in the Americas. So at 
8.28 p.m. Um, New York time, remembering that uh, North America, well, the United States is now only four hours behind, or New York is now only four hours behind London. Uh, it used to be five hours, but now um, uh, the United States is, is, is on daylight saving time, whereas Europe is not yet on daylight saving time. So there's only a four hour time difference between London and New York. Uh, so London it's at 0.28 on Wednesday that the moon goes into Taurus. That's 28 minutes after midnight. Um, so this evening, and indeed if you're in California, um, that would be uh, 5.28 p.m. So the last part of the day in the Americas, the moon does change sign from... It moves out of Aries into Taurus. And that... Uh, but it's going to slow things down a bit. Uh, it's perhaps going to take the edge off, say, Mercury and Aries. Um, stability is going to be uh, more important. We're going to find it easier to stay in one place. Uh, maybe we're going to find it easier to keep our mouth shut. Um, but, uh, you know, if we're with people uh, this evening and we're in North America, um, we, may, we may find that, that things are more mellow uh, this evening. Um, than they were perhaps earlier in the day um, or yesterday. There is also the heliocentric position. Um, I have decided that now to look at the heliocentric uh, position of the planets um, as well as the geocentric position of the planets every day. Um, hopefully um, I won't forget. So remember, geo, ge, remember the heliocentric positions of the planets represent the positions of the planets from the sun's perspective. We put the sun in the middle of the solar system where it should be because astrology is east and west. It, it assumes that uh, the earth is the center of the solar system when of course it's not. Um, so looking at the positions of the planets from a heliocentric perspective, uh, we get uh, we get this. Uh, remember, no moon, because from the sun's perspective, the sun and the moon are in exactly the same place. So there's no point in putting a moon in. Um, now, what is important today is that, uh, firstly, we're starting to see a Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. The Jupiter-Uranus conjunction is now really close. Um, and... This, uh, you know, Mercury is starting to move towards the Jupiter, the Jupiter Uranus conjunction. This Jupiter Uranus conjunction is trying the Sun, sorry, trying the Earth. So, in heliocentric charts, always look at what the Earth is doing. Um, so, the, if the Sun is in Pisces, by definition, the Earth is in is in Virgo. So today, the Earth is trying the Jupiter Uranus conjunction, and. Sounds nice, doesn't it? A trine between the Earth and the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. Not necessarily. In heliocentric astrology, trines are pretty neutral. Uh, I wouldn't have said they were a favourable aspect. Um, trines and sextiles often show up at times of disaster, uh, heliocentrically. Um, and I think we need to be careful today. Uh, I think there might be some kind of event. Um, I think... I think this is spectacular, the um, Earth trining uh, Jupiter-Uranus. But it's so impersonal, this heliocentric chart. Remember, in a heliocentric chart, we don't have an ascendant. We also don't have a moon. Uh, we don't have a sun. Um, so it's like this ease involving the Earth and the Jupiter-Saturn and the Jupiter-Uranus um, Jupiter conjunction basically says it's easy for something major to happen. Uh, the resistance is not is is the resistance is just not there. So if it's something easy for to, for something to happen, then you could say, well, if it can go wrong, it will go wrong. Um, and really, this Earth trying to Jupiter Uranus is looking for somewhere, looking for somewhere to manifest itself. It's looking for a weak spot. It's looking for maybe in, in the human world, looking for someone to be careless, uh, for some process or some conflict to have the potential for something really difficult happening. And there would be um, 
you know that's Earth, Ju- Earth trine Jupiter Uranus, and I've you know I've looked at you know I've looked at some charts in you know when I looked at looked at horoscope look, looked at um, the video for this week. Uh, I was, uh, you know, I looked at a load of heliocentric charts, and I looked at the chart of Chernobyl. I looked at the chart of um, uh, the 1987 October 19th stock market crash. Um, you know, it's, it's always when someone is doing something stupid, um, the heliocentric chart will seek it out. Although, of course, in reality, probably the heliocentric chart is just a reflection of what is going on down here on Earth. And it's not just the fact that we've got Earth trine moving towards... The, well, it's pretty, it's, much, it's pretty much on that trine. It is today making that exact trine to Jupiter-Uranus. It's also that we've got this conjunction here between Mars, Venus and Pluto. Um, so Venus, heliocentric Venus-Mars-Pluto conjunction. That, again, is pretty dramatic. It's about perhaps a power struggle, it's about uh, something um, uh, something going um, something going wrong because some, someone is pushing their weight around. Although, I suppose you could say Venus-Mars conjunction. Um, we've had a Venus, you know, Venus-Mars conjunction here. We think, is there really a Venus-Mars conjunction? Well, geocentrically, you might not think there is, but actually from a heliocentric perspective, yes. Um, so in a general sense, um, Venus-Mars can be about sexuality. It can be, you know, Venus is a planet of, of female sexuality. Mars is a planet of male sexuality. Um, so there is, there is a connection there, and it is about attractiveness. Um, and Pluto, you throw in Pluto as well, that, that's really quite intense, uh, so it might be about people trying to use their charis- charisma and attractiveness um, to get their way. And yeah, this is this is a very global thing, though. Um, there is a question mark about how personal a heliocentric uh, chart can actually be. But the heliocentric chart does indicate um, that today might be quite dramatic, and this is not indicated really by the geocentric chart. Um, and this is why I say that you you always need to consider what's going on heliocentrically. I mean, every now and then. I'm not saying you have to use heliocentric astrology. Um, but if you want to play with heliocentric astrology and you haven't got um, uh, the, the computer software, then astro.com does have um, P- PDFs on their ephemer- ephemeris section. You can get PDFs for... Um, every year for the heliocentric positions on of the of the planets okay so that's the broad astrological picture with the heliocentric chart being very dramatic i would have said but the geocentric chart being not so um not so dramatic um so let's let's go back to the regular chart the one we know and love and so what I want to do now is uh, look at the is look at the astrology from the perspective of the twelve signs. So, so these are my forecasts for the twelve signs for Tuesday, March the twelfth, twenty twenty four. Aries, you are able to assert yourself today. And you can assert yourself in a very natural way. You, you don't have to cause major conflict. You don't have to upset anyone. You will just, you will just know how to get your way. Um, yes, it requires a little bit of thought, a little bit of effort, but nothing spectacular. Uh, you just decide what you want and you quietly... Um, get on with it and although you know deep down you may be really impatient you may really want things to happen uh, now this minute uh, you will have the rationality and the logic uh, to make sure that you don't cause um, too much upset Uh, in fact Aries um, 
you know, as you go through the day, um, I think that you're going to be um, uh, quite charismatic. Um, you know, people, people will like you and you will give the impression of being someone who is optimistic, um, who has a vision of the future which is very appealing. Um, so in order to get your way, it's always a good idea to talk about what you want, talk about your vision and talk about all the things that could go right if you were to get your way, because I think that people are going to really go for that. Um, and I think also Aries, it might be a good idea to show a little bit of um, generosity. That could be about paying people compliments, um, giving someone people your time. You know, generosity for an Aries uh, t today w is going to go a long way. And I suppose with generosity, I'm not really talking about financial generosity. I'm talking more about generosity with your time and generosity with your with your compliments. Uh, you know, telling people you know, <laughs> telling people how. Uh, uh, how much you appreciate them and talking about their talking about their talents and achievements really talking that up i think that will go down um really well um in terms of relationships well there is this heliocentric conjunction between venus and mars remember it's heliocentric um from the um sun's perspective you know it's quite a high level force it's quite an impersonal force but you know, Mars is your ruler. And so from a heliocentric position, perspective, it's conjunct Venus. So that does make you quite charismatic and attractive. Um, you know, people are going to gravitate towards you. And yeah, you'll know how to do things without causing upset. Yeah, it will indeed be something about you that is um, somewhat smooth. And so, yes, uh, take advantage of that opportunity. Um, you might also notice a change in some of the people close to you. Uh, you know, this is because uh, Venus is moving into moving into Pisces. Uh, you know, from an Aries perspective, you know, Venus, you know, Venus rules your opposite sign of Libra. Um, Venus is in Pisces. Venus works very well in Pisces. Um, so some of the people close to you are going to be more emotional than usual, more um, more considerate and more receptive than usual. Um, and I think um, that's going to make things a lot easier. Um, but if they're more emotional, it does mean, of course, that they're more subjective, less objective. They may have... Um, their own opinions and their own subjectivities. And you need to respect that. Um, you need to respect that they have a view of the world that may be based on something you don't respect. Um, you know, maybe the way they feel. Um, if someone has an opinion about the world because of the way they feel, that doesn't sound very logical, but I think, I think you need to um, respect that. Taurus. So Venus is your ruling planet. Um, and Venus is now well and truly in Pisces. Um, it is a, it is a change. I think it is a fortunate change. Um, there's nothing wrong with Venus being in Aquarius, but uh, with uh, with you know Venus in Pisces, you know Venus is exalted in Pisces. So that means that there's something about you that is somewhat exalted. Uh, you're, in a, you're in a good position. Uh, you're feeling comfortable. Um, at the same time, you have um, a sense of what you want and what you hope for, which goes beyond mere ambition. And uh, so in, in, in that sense, you feel that uh, you want to be you want to be in places and with people who reflect uh, your your aspirations. You know, you're not you don't want to be with people who just 
don't respect what you're trying to achieve. Um, that would be no good. Um, I think you'd feel pretty pretty miserable. So when choosing your friends, when choosing your contacts, try to try to try to concentrate on people who who are on the same wavelength as you. Um, you know, not just emotionally, but perhaps also in terms of ideology and opinions. Uh, I think that that could be um, that could be quite important. Um, still. Uh, Taurus, I'm not saying everything is wonderful um, because you may be a little focused on what could go wrong. Um, you can see the seeds of what could go wrong. I'm not really talking about you. I'm talking about the world around you. Um, you know, everything might be fine, but you know, you can see that nothing lasts forever. Uh, you know, you know, Shakespeare was a Taurus. Um, Shakespeare had a very grim view of the world. Um, he knew, you know, all his all his sonnets are, you know, they talk. He talks about love and whatever, but he also talks about um, the inevitability of death. I think that's in his. Uh, that's in, in many of his sonnets that nothing lasts forever. The the, the 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 beauty of youth uh doesn't last forever um and you know asking about you know he i think you know shakespeare of course is always considering what is the point of anything because he's a taurus he brings things down to its actual material and um, basic reality what is what is the point and i think that is a the theme of in in shakespeare and so yes shakespeare um shakespeare was a taurus and uh i think that aspect of taurus uh may be manifesting a little uh asking yourself what is the point because you can see the beginnings of decay and again i'm not i'm not talking about anything personal here uh i'm talking about um what you're seeing in the world around you and you can see how things can things are going wrong and you're seeing that certain cycles are starting to go to to move to to move into their sort of negative um phase um yeah, other people might not notice it but you notice it um and so there might be a preoccupation for some torians um, with the inevitability of decline and death, I must emphasize i 'm not making anything i 'm not make, this is not a personal comment i 'm um, just talking about the way some of your thoughts uh, may be moving um, don 't let this get you down. Um, anyone can think about the fact that you know all of us are going to die at some stage um, that however much we 're enjoying ourselves it's it's it can't last um so don't get too don't get too fixated on that um but still you might come across certain people who have this approach who are a bit down and you suppose you have to work out how best to um but how best to negotiate the situation have, but i still i would say taurus don't do anything dangerous uh today um because there is an elevated risk here um so so don't contemplate don't contemplate doing anything you know it's not a day for playing with guns it's not a day for torrents to play with guns or for climbing mountains um driving race cars legally or illegally uh that's not not a good idea because bad things could happen um but sorry i had to get in that warning um then, and that shouldn't uh, that shouldn't take away from the fact that I actually think it's it's going to be um, quite a good day, um, you know, because um, you know Venus is now gathering strength in, in Pisces and it's exalted in Pisces. Um, you you are, I think, still going to want to assert yourself, and we shouldn't forget from that from a heliocentric point of view. Venus, your your ruler, is conjunct Mars. Remember, it's not conjunct Mars from a geocentric point of view. Um, 
very widely conjunct Mars, I suppose nine degrees doesn't really count as a conjunction, but from a heliocentric point of view, that conjunction is is exact. Um, and there may be one particular thing you really feel you have to do and you really feel you have to assert yourself um, and it just has to be done. Um, now, it, it, In some ways it doesn't have to be done, but you feel it's necessary uh, because you feel that in a wider perspective, uh, if you don't do it now, um, you might um, miss your chance. Um, and there may be a bit of competition there. As soon as you start to assert yourself, you may find that you're in competition with another person. Um, if you do get into a competitive situation, how are you going to win a competitive situation? Not through brute force, but instead through sensitivity. Gemini. Well, Mercury, your ruler, is gathering strength in um, in Aries. Uh, it's now Mercury is now well and truly in in Aries. So, in general, uh, it is a time when you you know you say what's on your mind. I mean, that's got to be the case, hasn't it? I mean. Um, uh mercury rules mercury rules gemini gemini's in aries so yes uh you really do feel that you you need to assert yourself um particularly particularly on a verbal level and that's good but you do have to be careful what you say um I think there may be a temptation for some Geminis to say things which are inappropriate. Uh, you may say things which are somewhat shocking or you may want to talk about subjects which really shouldn't be talked about um, I suppose, you know, Gemini is a curious sign. Gemini is curious about all sorts of stuff. Um, curious about stuff that other people are not interested in or just don't want to be interested in. And so some Geminis may just, you know, just feel they're just, you know, they want to say something. So they, you know, they talk about something. Maybe you've, maybe you've seen it on the internet or in a newspaper and it, it attracts you. It seems interesting. But it may actually also be disturbing. Um, so a bit of a self-censorship may actually be necessary there because what you find interesting, um, other people may not find interesting. Indeed, they might find, actually find it quite disturbing. So, um, so Gemini do consider that, though in general, uh, your relations with other people... Um, really should be working very well um, today. Um, you know, you are, you are sociable. Um, people are going to, people are going to like you, I think. Um, and you are also interesting. Um, you're, an, you know, you're an exciting person to have around. You've got lots of things to say. And, um, okay, a bit of self-censorship might be useful. Um, but overall, um, you know it. You know that. You know it should. You know today things should run quite well. Um, but you know, going back to your talking and your mind. Um, you know, when you when you when you're dealing with Gemini, you always have to think about the Gemini mind. Um, so I'm a Gemini, by the way. Just just to remind you, so I don't want you to think that I'm um, a sort of. Be, um, singling you singling you out or anyway i'm uh, so i'm talking to myself as well as i'm as well as talking to you um but the gemini mind is uh quite restless today uh that's because mercury is um semi-square uranus um uranus is um quite an unsettling force or at least it can be and so your mind is working in many different directions and you may actually at a certain stage become quite restless. 
But I think there is a general atmosphere of restlessness today, regardless of your sign. But I think it particularly affects Gemini, um, because, you know, Mercury is the planet ruling Gemini. And so semi-square uh, semi Uranus, you know, there's a sense in which you're pacing. OK, you may not be literally pacing, but you may be pacing in your head if you don't get enough stimulation, if you don't get something that you can actually focus on. So if you do get lots of ideas, um, you know, you do need to work out how to deal with these ideas. I wouldn't just communicate them just for the sake of it. Uh, just because you're thinking about something doesn't mean you should speak. It doesn't mean you should talk about it. Um, as I've already said, you know, you might cause um, you might cause a bit of offence there if you just say whatever whatever's on your mind. Um, so you have to work work out how how to work it through. Maybe a bit of planning is necessary. A bit of structure is necessary. Um, writing things down. So that could be um, a good idea. But whatever's going on with your mind, you are an innovator. Some of your thoughts are really quite brilliant, and you are. Um, moving forward you're starting to look at the future and even if you can't do something now it, it does seem that in the near future you will have the opportunity to put your ideas into action cancer you can you know you continue to feel that uh, you've got something to do um, I think that uh, Cancerians are uh, fairly motivated today. Um, you know, you you understand that you have to go out into the world and possibly make things happen. Um, you may take the view that you are the only person who can make things happen. Uh, if you don't do anything... Uh, well, um, nothing is going to happen. Um, so, you you know, it's it's just important that you you respect that, and it is the, absolutely the right thing to do. I said that yesterday. I think uh, it is the right thing for you to do to be out there, making things happen, uh, creating waves. That's what you're there for, um, and. If you are with other people, you know, especially in an organizational setting or at work or in some, I don't know, some organizational society that you're involved in, uh, it may be down to you uh, to take the lead. Uh, you will see that something needs to be done and you will be very clear um, about what, um, what needs to be done. Um, Though you should understand what the source of your power is. Um, because today, um, the moon, which remember the moon is the ruler of cancer, uh, the moon is sextile Mars. And so se moon sextile Mars is not just about um, cancerians being assertive. It's about cancerians being able to bring their inner power to bear on their outer environment you know that the inner power the source of that power is is deep within yourself um and, and it might be the case that you don't the one reason you might not want to assert yourself today is because you might feel that it might make you might make you vulnerable you know we think about um assertion as something that gives us protection that's what we're there for it's a defense mechanism uh, but you might take a different view you might take the view that if you are asserting yourself if you're trying to protect your own interests then you're revealing a part of your a part of who you are and that might not be something what you that you want to do well i think the answer to that is to say that you don't have to reveal everything you just have to reveal enough enough to um, get your way and uh, then that's uh, that should you know that uh, that should mean that uh, you can um, you can get the balance right that you can get your way with without um, overexposing yourself um, one final point if you're in the Americas um, this, you know, this is specifically to the Americas 
this evening, in fact, late afternoon, if you're in um, California, the moon does change sign. It moves, it moves out of Aries into Taurus. You might experience a change. Uh, you might find yourself calming down, uh, being more reflective, um, and you know, also yeah, just being more grounded, um, being able to put yourself and other people at ease. And of course, it's the evening. You're probably at home in the evening. Okay, you might be working, I suppose. Depends what you're doing. But I suppose many Cancerians will be at home in the evening. Um, uh, Americans seem to go, bed, go to bed early, uh, at least compared to people in the UK. I don't know. Is that right? I think they do, but I'm not sure about that. Uh, my observation when I walk around the streets at sort of 10.30, everything is dead. I think it will be a little bit more life in the UK. Um, but uh, yes, so moon moving into Taurus, there is a, there is a time, to, it's a time to reflect um, and settle. And you may, be, you may have a chance this evening, if you're in the Americas, cancer, cancer to uh, settle not just yourself, but to settle other people, the people close to you. And um, there may be a sense of, of togetherness and, and even sensuality um, with moon moving into Taurus. If you're not in the Americas, um, don't worry. A moon moves into Taurus tomorrow. Leo, you're feeling that um, things could be better. I mean, better in an inspirational way you know you're not happy with um the status quo um you you want to consider you know, it's not you yeah you want new ideas and you want new possibilities and some leos may actually be feeling that they are um wasting their time um that you you're supposed to be doing something and you're not doing it and that bothers you um and i actually think that's quite healthy um because fundamentally what's going on here um leo is that you're feeling a, a great need for self improvement you're not complacent and this desire for self improvement um is starting to is starting to have quite uh, quite a big impact on you, and uh, you know it's it's not enough just to have wonderful ideas. It's not enough to to read about what can be done or think about what you can done or watch you know watch YouTube videos about what can be done. You actually have to make things happen, and this may manifest in certain cases as a certain amount of ruthlessness um, once you decide you've got to do it you're not going to care too much about other people um, it has to be done uh, this is the main thing that matters um, and um, it might then be the case that you you upset people because, you know, you say, well, we've got to do this, we've got to do this, we've got to do this now. But I would have said that is unnecessary. Because if something needs to be done, Leo, then you can just go and do it. You don't have to involve other people at this stage. I don't think so. No. Um, in fact, um, this, self this desire for self-improvement, um, to begin with, I think needs to actually be something quite private. Um, you know, you you start by improving yourself. S you know, self improvement begins at home. Um, it, it, maybe later you can you can think about what other people need to do. But I think at, I think right now this is something personal. Um, working on yourself, and I don't mean that just in some inspirational way. Just I don't know, meditating or thinking about it. No, I'm talking about actual concrete action. Um, and the beginnings of concrete action, um, and I, I think I think that's that is going to be important. Though it is possible that you can en enlist another person's help. There is someone out there who 
can be of great help. They can help you get your get your get your way. They can actually help you improve yourself. And you do not have to be obnoxious about it. You don't have to tell people, tell this person what you want. Um, it it's more about cooperation. It's about finding someone who has the same set of priorities as you. And and I do think um, that uh, that today. Um, you will find that person. Um, they perhaps have a slightly different view from you. Um, in some ways, they may be more dynamic than you. Um, they, they may actually have the ability to put something into action which you on your own can't do. So uh, do consider that. But uh, you know, whatever happens, whether you're alone, whether you're with people, self-improvement does matter. And self-improvement doesn't mean that you have to alienate yourself. Virgo. So Virgo, uh, you are still in a kind of a rather strange mood. Um, you're not really in the mood to for engagement. Um, I mean, you might try to engage with people, um, I think you're going to want things to happen, but it may not be particularly successful. Um, you'll just feel that, that you know you're you're moving you're moving in a different direction. It's not it's not a situation that is going to last for very long. Um, indeed, it's it's kind of coming to an end, and you're starting to see the beginnings of new possibilities. Um, but but right now, um, you know, a lot of the action um, should be taking place um, off stage. Um, and, and by off stage, I'm really saying that uh, I'm not convinced that uh, anyone really needs to be involved um, except for you. Um, now, there's certainly uh, work to be done. Um, you know, today, after all, there is a sextile aspect between the moon and Mars. Um, this actually means that you can accomplish a great deal. Um, you can you can cover cover a lot of ground, and I think you will be pretty aware of where that ground is. Uh, it's an area where you yeah you have to do a lot of work. Um, it's the kind of work that is perhaps a little boring, um, might be repetitive, but you're, you're covering something in a solid, systematic way. And I do think that you are going to accomplish, accomplish a lot. Um, but you've got to have a plan. Um, you can't change your plan. You've got to have a single plan, decide what you want to achieve by the end of the day and just, just go and do it. Uh, now, are there going to be disruptions? Possibly. Now, the reason there could be disruptions uh, is because Mercury, Mercury is your ruler, is um, Mercury is semi-square Uranus. Makes, Mercury is making an exact 45 degree aspect to Uranus. Uh, you know, Mercury, okay, so Mercury, your ruler, is potentially being disrupted because Uranus can be quite a disruptive force. So you have to ask yourself, what, where is the disruption actually coming from? Um, I think it's actually coming from yourself, although it might seem as if it's coming from outside. You know, there is a temptation to blame other people for messing things up. But really, there's something in you that is not entirely happy with the situation. And I think, I think what it is is something quite high level um, connected with broader concepts of meaning. You know, we all have um, a need for meaning, um, um, whatever we believe, whatever we believe. Uh, you know, even if we're atheists, we still have a, a need for meaning. Um, we need to, we want to be part of something. And I think that's part of what it is. There's something kind of, knocking on your door saying, why? What is the purpose? What are you doing this for? You should be thinking about something else. 
Now, that doesn't mean that you should drop everything um, and say, oh, yeah, why am I doing this? You know, I've just said that it's a day for for systematically organizing yourself. Um, now, if you worry about meaning, if you open the gates and you see, you know, the, I don't know, what, what would Huxley say, the elders Huxley, the doors of perception, and you see the whole universe of what it really is, well, you'd just accomplish nothing, would you? Um, but uh, you still have to be aware of that need for meaning. Um, it's it's something you know. You, it's and it and it's it shouldn't be about conflict. You have to understand that whatever you're doing is part of a broader plan, and um, the challenges you feel, which I think they're challenges that might they might appear to come from outside, but they're actually coming from within you, are legitimate and they do have to be taken seriously. Um, maybe very soon you can start to think about the broader meaning and start to act on it, this need for some wider context. But right now, probably not. Libra. I hope, Libra, you are now um, enjoying the fact that Venus is um, uh, in Pisces. Uh, I mean, I suppose it's a bit of a two-edged sword, Venus um, moving into, moving through Pisces. I mean, Venus, remember, is your uh, Venus is your ruler. Um, so Venus rules two signs: it rules Taurus and it rules and it rules Libra. So the good news, I think, with Venus moving through Pisces is that very simply, uh, Venus is exalted in Pisces. Uh, it works, you know, it works, works well in that sign. So um, there's also, there's a sense of comfort there. So I think that is, that is fortunate. And, and I think it's quite lucky for Venus to be in, for Venus to be in Pisces, uh, simply because of its, because it, because of the fact that it's exalted. Um, but uh, from a, from a Libran perspective, um, the sign Pisces is, I don't know, a little boring. Um, it's, Pisces is about organization. It's about organizing perhaps in the face of chaos and disintegration. Uh, but it's not your chaos and disintegration. I suppose it's what's going on in the world. Uh, you can see that, uh, you know, it's hard work for everyone to keep things going. And uh, in order to deal with this, you know, you do need a certain amount of structure. And with Venus moving into Pisces, um, I think you do need to create that structure. But how do you create that structure? In order to organize and structure your life. It's not just about um, building things and being systematic. It's also, it's, it's also about being aware of what might be attacking that structure. Um, because, you know, if you leave anything for long enough, it disintegrates. That's the way of the world. Um, um, Anything that is alive and vibrant must have the capacity to disintegrate. And so um, you perhaps have to use your, um, your feelings to work out how best to protect what you're trying to build because you're building for the future. Uh, you're organizing for the future. And when you're organizing for the future, you consider uh, all of the possible, possible threats um, and those threats, you know, they're not direct, scary threats. It's just the threats of time. As time passes, so is so so it is that things disintegrate unless they have some kind of flexibility. So you have to build, but also build in a way that takes account takes into account um, the the pressures of time. And I, th I think that's that is um, 
what you need to do. Um, now, uh, watch your uh, watch your feet uh, with Venus going into uh, Venus going into Pisces. Really look after your feet. Um, so have a look at your feet um, and how you know have a look at how you're treating your feet. Uh, do consider your shoes, uh, whether you're wearing shoes that are that are you know maybe the wrong size or there's, there's, something's rubbing or whatever, um, and you know activities that might um, damage your feet because you know Pisces. Uh, Pisces rules, uh, the sign Pisces has a special connection with the feet because it's, uh, that makes sense, doesn't it? Because Pisces is the last, it's the last sign. And so if you, if you, if the Aries is the Aries is the first sign, is the head, then the bottom sign, the Pisces is, of course, the feet. And um, right now with Venus, your Venus, your ruler moving into Pisces, uh, that's, that's certainly uh, something you to, something you need to consider. I'm not saying anything bad is going to happen to your feet. I'm just, I'm just saying um, that you need to make a special effort to look after um, your your feet. Um, uh, okay, in in a week or two, Venus will be conjunct Saturn, um, and that might be a time when you may have to make a really special effort to look after your feet. But don't worry, I'll I'll I'll, I'll mention. I think I'll, I'll try to mention that when when the Venus Saturn conjunction um, comes up. Um, now, as far as um, other people are concerned, a uh, couple of points to make. Um, it is true that the Moon is making a sextile to Mars, and the Moon continues to move through Aries, which is your opposite sign. Um, so uh, uh, I think there is there is there are people out there who are going to be helpful. Um, and they're going to be, um, I believe, supportive of your creativity. Uh, so through another person's help, um, you can um, make the most of your creative potential um, and I think aside from creativity you and someone else can, can do some good work together um, so in, in, in a partnership in a team um, yeah I think I think you can um, cover a lot of ground at the same time uh, there is a heliocentric conjunction between Venus and Mars today um, so remember, heliocentric is looking at things from the perspective of the sun being at the center of the universe. So, sorry, not the center of the universe, center of the solar system. So with a heliocentric Venus-Mars conjunction, um, there is a danger there because Venus is your ruler. Mars has a connection between the other person. Uh, there is a danger of an irritation. Um, and this irritation may not be sort of personal. It may be about how you look at the world and how you consider um, your progress in the world and what is what is helping you and what is holding you up. And you may feel that something or someone really is holding you up. Um, um, also... Uh, the Venus Mars, the, Venus, the heliocentric Venus Mars conjunction um, may have a link with close relationships um, uh, that you and someone, you and someone else are starting to get close, um, but maybe too close. I think with this Venus Mars conjunction, you want to take, you want to be able to benefit from cooperation with other people but with the heliocentric venus mars conjunction i don't think you want to get really close uh to any one person unless you have a hundred percent trust for them um because otherwise you might feel that you're overwhelmed and that you lose your freedom of action and i think that's not something um you want to do but i wouldn't get too hung up on the venus the heliocentric venus mars conjunction um Instead, uh, you know, just 
just focus on on what what you can do and what needs to be done if someone can help you without overwhelming you then that should be fine and uh, overall i think libra you can have a constructive day scorpio you're uh feeling that uh you want to know where everything is um you're, you're you're not really in the mood for being messed around and it's possible scorpio that you may have um an unreasonably static view of the world um just thinking that you know it's perhaps all about you um and that you want things organized in a particular way um and that might have something to do with how you respond and how you react to uh, to other people but you do have to understand that different people have different approaches and your approach is not the only approach um and if you're trying to make changes today and i think many scorpios are going to be trying to make changes today then those changes do have to take into account uh your social environment so consider people uh consider what they want um and at the very least try to negotiate with them and you know i think this is something you can definitely do i i mean after all um the moon is making a um a sextile aspect to mars um as I, as i've said earlier sextiles are a fortunate aspect um they allow you to harness your abilities effectively moon moon sextile mars um and you can you can get what you want without having to impose on on other people um your particular part of the world is some is something which you you're in control don't worry uh you might not think you're in control but you are in control you can organize it um uh very well and i don't, i don't i don't really see any problems in, in that department um also uh as i've been mentioning in this video there is a heliocentric conjunction between venus and mars and i think that's important for you because mars is your ruler and so heliocentric conjunction between venus and mars um does actually make you um quite effective in social situations provided you're reasonable i mean there is a tendency scorpio for you to be unreasonable and for you to spoil it and to think that uh you don't want to compromise you 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 don't want to give anything away your way is the only way but no that's not that is absolutely not the right approach um you, you know you can you can get on with people you just try to listen to them um you can you can also benefit from people with this venus mars um conjunction uh this venus mars heliocentric uh conjunction and at the same time scorpio there seems to be little doubt that you've got something to offer you've got something very important to offer um and once people realize what you've got to offer it it may be your your wisdom um but it may also be your enthusiasm um i mean i know that scorpios can be quite negative but if you really try um make a real effort um then your enthusiasm and your optimism um can really have make make quite a big difference um so i think you should really really try to harness that um so you know overall scorpio um today is very much up to you it really is up to you what happens today i think that at worst you could be 
so focused on what you want and believing that what you want is the only thing that matters and that your way of, of working is the only way, that, yeah, you could spoil the day. That That's absolutely possible. On the other hand, there are loads of opportunities here. Um, you have the ability to be to work very constructively um, with the people around you. Um, you have the there's a possibility of you being really liked and admired, um, people really wanting to have you around. You just have to be open um, and not uh, not judgmental and just perhaps at, so, at some level, Scorpio, seeing yourself as being there for other people. Um, that doesn't mean you have to compromise anything, but just being there for people, um, giving your giving your your advice and wisdom, but also giving your enthusiasm. It is there, definitely there. You give over your enthusiasm and your optimism, and people are going to really like you for it. And in the end, I think that is going to really improve your your general position. So, if you want it to be a good day, Scorpio, it certainly will be um, a good day. Sagittarius. I think, Sagittarius, that um, you have a lot of resources at your disposal. Um, you, can, um, you can show the world what you can do. And at the same time, if you need anything, uh, if, if, well, if you need anything to sort of maximize your, uh, to maximize your potential, it will be there for you. Uh, so you don't have to struggle too hard to find to find any sort of missing ingredients. Um, the missing ingredients are not missing at all. Um, they are right in front of you. Um, and um, yes, your 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 creativity is going to be pretty exceptional. Um, and I think that you're going to be able to communicate that creativity and 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 be able to communicate the power of your creativity um you know the fundamental person you are is is there um it's available um so there is absolutely no ex no excuse to hide your light under a bushel. That's that's absolutely not what you should not what you should be doing. Um, so keep going. You are you are going in. You're going in the right in the right direction. And I think there could be a sense of excitement um, today um, because. Um, because Jupiter, you know, Jupiter is your ruler, and Jupiter is starting to make a heliocentric conjunction to Uranus. Now, that heliocentric conjunction happens at a slightly different time from a geocentric conjunction. Um, but the Earth, you know, remember I talked about the heliocentric chart where we look at the Earth rather than the Sun. The Earth is making a trine. To Jupiter, it's making a trine to Uranus, so it's bringing it all in, it's bringing it all together. And while this Earth trine to the Jupiter Uranus conjunction, for most of us, may be quite general, uh, just a bit too cosmic um, for us to really make use of, I think if anyone can make use of it, it's you, Sagittarius. I mean, Sagittarius is um, a very intuitive sign. And uh, with your intuition, uh, you know, that's what that means that you just understand, you just get it. And what's happening in the world, where it's all going, sure, in many respects, things are getting worse, uh, but that's that's not about you, Sagittarius. It's it's just about the world. But you get you absolutely get what's going on, and because you get what's going on, and today you particularly get what's going on, um, you're able to put yourself in a position of great strength with just a knowledge of what's happening. 
Um, and because you have that knowledge, you're able to make the preparations. You're able to, you know, you're able to um, do. You're able to do what's required of you, and um, in a way, Sagittarius today, you might be a bit of a prophet. Um, and the things you say without thinking um, may actually be right. Um, so if you're having discussions with people about the world and what's going on in the world and where the opportunities are, um, listen to what you're listen to the words that you are saying and remember them because it might be it might you might have a situation today where you say something about opportunities and you just say it in a rather frivolous way and then years later you realize oh wow i remember that i i understood what was going on but i didn't do anything about it so do consider your own your your ability to be um to be intuitive um uh because yeah it might be something um quite special capricorn for the last day or two capricorn um you may have felt that you you just weren't really in the mood for much uh, at least not in the mood for much um beyond your own immediate um, sphere sphere of interest um and i think that's fine um you know you you need your space um you need time to reflect um but things are changing um i think that you're starting to see uh what needs to be done and who you need to connect with um i, I don't think there's necessarily anything that needs to be done um right now um but i th i think you perhaps need to start um preparing um for a change and i think also that you may have become more effective now uh, when it comes to um, interacting with the world around you. you know, in, the, in the recent past, you may have felt that perhaps people weren't always listening uh, and that might have been annoying. But you also have to ask why might people have not been listening and maybe the reason people weren't listening is because you weren't listening and now i think capricorn you are in a better position to start listening i, I think that you are becoming um increasingly sensitive um you're you're picking up on things which perhaps yesterday or the day before you weren't picking up on and because you're picking up picking up on things um that means you're able to engage um engage with um the people with the people around you you're able to understand the way they're feeling and that sensitivity um is i think going to going to really help and because of your increased sensitivity you know, as I said, especially in that sort of communicative to and fro uh, between you and others, because of this sensitivity, uh, I think that you're in a, you're also you're in a better position in t for um, getting your way. Um, there is a sense, Capricorn, in which you want something done. Uh, it's becoming quite strong. It's 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 a feeling that uh, yeah, now it has to be done. Um, there's a certain sense of frustration, though, because you might be feeling that the thing you want to get done, you can't get done, and that might be annoying you. Um, but perhaps it couldn't, you couldn't get it done because in the past the setup wasn't right. Um, but now it is coming into focus. So if there is, some, if there is that one thing that you want to get done, um, then now is... I think the time to start really working out how you're going to how you're going to go about it, um, because I, you know I think that uh, things are things are moving in your moving in your favour. It may be uh, with the moon making a sextile to Mars 
that there does have to be uh, a little bit of a little bit of discussion about money. Um, you know, I have mentioned money on and off for for, for, for um, Capricorns for some time. Uh, reason being because there used to be a a lot of stuff in Aquarius, and from a Capricorn perspective, Aquarius is a very financially orientated sign. Now. Most of that stuff has moved out of Aquarius. Okay, we're going to have Pluto in Aquarius on and off for a long time. But, you know, Mars is still in Aquarius. Mars is about assertion. Um, from your perspective, it's about, you know, it's about asserting yourself in terms of sorting out, sorting yourself out in terms of money. That's one way of looking at it. Um, but, you know, with Moon, Sextile, Mars, that might indicate that... Uh, there's work to be done in terms of of settling a financial matter um, a financial matter that perhaps isn't fully resolved um, but you now do have you do have an opportunity to to really sort of resolve it um, but you still want to do it in your own way um, but a lot of this idea of wanting it done in your own way is you know is to do with the fact that the moon is in Aries and the moon is going to change sign uh, pretty soon um, in fact if you're in the Americas um, the moon changes sign this evening or even if you're on the west coast it changes sign late this afternoon uh, the moon moves from from Aries into Taurus and I think that's that's good news for Capricorns. Again, if you're not in the Americas, don't worry. Moon's moves into Taurus tomorrow, um, but Moon moving into Taurus is probably going to make you um, a little more agreeable. Um, also, the Moon is going to be Moon in Taurus. It's 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 an Earth sign. You're a Capricorn. You're an Earth sign. Moon in Taurus is 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 good for Capricorns, um, and it's going to a enable you to sort of settle yourself but at the same time be a little more extroverted and a, a, a bit more appreciative of your own and other people's um, creativity so this evening if you're in the america's capricorn you may experience a bit of a change um, not just in yourself but in terms of the people close to you um, the people close to you may become more relaxed uh, and not just because it's the evening, the end of the day. Uh, there's a more fundamental change going on and things will be more settled. Um, there'll be less drama. Um, so that's it, Capricorn. It uh, looks, an looks, looks an okay day. There's plenty of things that you can do or indeed plenty of things perhaps that you should be doing uh, if you're able to motivate yourself. Aquarius, you ha you continue to have quite a lot to say. Um, after all, there is a sextile between the Moon and Mars. Um, the Moon, um, the Moon is in a part of your chart that's connected with communication. Mars remains in your star sign, or your ascendant sign, or your Moon sign. It depends how you're looking at these. Um, it depends how you're looking at these uh, 12 sign readings I know a lot of people look at it from a perspective of the ascendant so that's why but so star sign may not feel right uh, but we can say that Mars continues to be in your sign and so the moon is making a the moon is making a sextile to Mars and um, um, I I think that's going to make you um reasonably assertive but not assertive in a way that is um is that is a way that is aggressive or upsets people i think that you can quietly make it clear about you can quietly make it clear um that you do have a set of desires and you you want these desires perhaps to be um to be fulfilled um Okay, I'm not saying everything you want. I'm not saying you're going to get everything you want, but uh, you're certainly going to be able to express the things that you want uh, in a way that is quite gentle, that I don't think is going to cause um, too much in the way of disruption. Um, but, you know, 
this this idea of you feeling that something has to change, uh, that you want something to happen, and that's perhaps your number one desire. You know, it shouldn't be neglected. There is something Aquarius that you you really do feel um, needs to happen, and um, you know, in the past, recent past, you may have felt that it just couldn't happen because the circumstances weren't right. Um, but I think now you may be in a position to actually work out ways of um, making it all happen, and I think uh, I, I think that is to be welcomed, and I think you're able to you're able to explain um, what you want and why you want it. But we should not completely ignore the financial dimension uh venus re, venus moves from aquarius into scorpio it's now sorry <laughs> venus moves from aquarius into pisces venus is, is very much in pisces um and that's not just about money it can also be about what is going on in terms of your um, of your work or if you're working or if you're involved in some kind of organization or the way you're trying to establish your public profile um, money is going to be important so for example yeah if you're working today um, and indeed over the next couple of weeks uh, the money aspect could be important maybe you or those employing you may be more more increasingly concerned about profit and whether something is is uh, is viable from a financial perspective. Yeah, financial viability is going to be important. I think there are, there could be um, a lot of toing and froing about um, financial viability. You know, whether something is worth doing. Um, from a financial perspective and people may you know pay, people may move one this way that way change their mind have different views one day other this you just have to be aware of that and try to try to make sense of it but um i think that this apparent chaos is actually quite useful because it's it's kind of opening up um it's opening up one's intuition here, uh, a f the feeling of where the financial flow is moving. Um, now, that might be in terms of your own personal finances. It could be about the finances of where you're working, um, the organizations you're involved with. You know, people can be involved in organizations in their community on a, vol on a voluntary basis and money can still be important. Uh, you know, for example, working for charities, non-profits, uh, money, money matters. And I think that you will have a good intuitive sense for where it's all developing. And if there are going to be problems in the near future, you might be the first person to notice. So if you get a feeling, not just about your own finances, but other people's finances or um some organization you're working for or with finances i would take that feeling quite seriously um because actually um aquarius um you might be you might be onto something and so um by perhaps giving a warning or oh, it could be about seeing an opportunity isn't it? it could could work both ways um you might you might be taken notice of and you could you could be you could prove yourself to be um, extremely useful Pisces you're in a you're feeling um, a bit uh, nervous restless uh, I think particularly if you're the kind of Pisces that is quite cosmic a cosmic Pisces um, and I think that is because of the heliocentric position. So from a heliocentric perspective, remember, this is just looking at the positions of um, the planets from a perspective of, a, of the sun being in the center of the solar system. Because astrologers um, 
astrologers tend to look at uh, things from a perspective of the earth um, but from a from a heliocentric perspective you know jupiter is your root you know well in in all perspect jupiter is your ruler jupiter rules rules pisces um but jupiter's getting really close to uranus and the earth the earth on which you are standing is trine uranus and it is trine your trine trine jupiter trine your, your, your trine your ruler so um even if you don't feel that heliocentric position uh in a um direct material way i think you're going to you're going to get some kind of inspiration i think it is quite inspired uh you know pisces can be a very intuitive sign and i think you're going to be particularly intuitive today you're going to feel something uh you're going to feel that yeah this is what's happening um this is this is the way it is um and the challenge then is to take your intuitions about the way everything is moving um and to make use of them to actually harness them in terms of your own life protecting the future um and also looking for new opportunities in the future but you 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 you've got access to a lot of high level cosmic information today so yeah so i'm really hoping um that you'll be able to make use of it now it's not just you um you know i've talked about i've well i won't say talked about it but i've suggested it perhaps that for other signs um so it is not isn't just you but we sh- just shouldn't forget that jupiter is the the ruler of pisces and it is conjunct uranus and it is trying the trying the earth and so i think you know i think that's something that you you really need to need to pick up on you know don't just get completely embroiled in the trivia of everyday life give yourself some time today to to think uh and to meditate um you know just 5 minutes listen to what the cosmos is telling you uh because i think a pisces it is telling you something quite important and you're helped by the fact that um venus is now for sure uh moving into your sign it's now you know venus is now in pisces um that is good news um venus is a planet of relationships um it allows you to understand people uh it allows you to be sympathetic um it it allows you to relate to what people are thinking and feeling um and as you go you know as you go through your daily life over the next days and weeks um you're going to make a good impression um you're going to be able to you know mold yourself to fit um whatever situation you're in so you can move around go to lots of different places with um different cultures and as you move from one place to another you you will be able to adapt and um that is going to make you um that is going to make you popular and so in fact uh your you know your popularity ratings uh should now be starting to climb steadily um so absolutely do not ignore um the outside world because yeah you can you can make a good impression so now i'm going to look at things from the perspective of the i ching um so i asked the question um you know, what is tuesday going to be like for watching the i ching segment of this video and the first hexagram i got was hexagram number 26 the taming power of the great now maybe the taming power of the great represents us um we are great perhaps um but this is about um a wild animal that's a symbolism of this hexagram it's a wild animal uh with a huge amount of energy um that's just ready to go but not quite 
So if we're feeling incredibly enthusiastic about something, we really want to want to get going on it. Um, we need to pause, hence the taming power of the great. And the symbolism of the taming power of the great uh, in the I Ching is of a, a wild bull, which you need to put a, a wooden board on its horns so it doesn't hurt itself. So there are things we could do potentially in our enthusiasm which could cause a little bit of little bit of damage. I mean, it's a good hexagram. This uh, don't get me wrong, um, but we'd need to we need a bit of restraint here. Um, that is that's going to be important. So so think. You know what is what is what is your big project? Uh, what's the big thing you're planning on doing? The thing that you, you know you really think you've got the energy to make it happen. You maybe want to get going on it right now. What is that thing? Then be ready to just calm down a bit. Um, that power of the great, you know, the great in you needs to be tamed. It doesn't mean being repressed or removed. It just needs to be tamed. It just needs to be held back um, so that it can be focused into doing something constructive. Um, that That is what, it, that's what is... Um, that's what's important here. You've got to be constructive. Um, you've got to, got to have a bit of self-discipline. And it is going to be worth it. Because um, the, the fourth line from the bottom moves. And so when the fourth line from the bottom moves, uh, we move to uh, this hexagram, which we've actually had quite recently, possession in great measure. So there's a promise here that if we can organize ourselves, if we can just show a bit of self-discipline, um, we can harness our energy, focus our energy, and get a really big payoff, possession in great measure. Um, there are a lot of things uh, we can get. Now, it would be tempting uh, to see this hexagram in terms of money. Now, it may well be that that is the case, um, that... Uh, if you're if you're trying to get hold of a, a large sum of money, for example, um, what it's telling you is that uh, you can't just go and grab it. You've got you've got to tame yourself in order to get what you're looking for. Um, but it it may just be something else because possession in great me measure. Um, may in itself not you know may not be the the be all and end all it's what the possession in great measure actually leads to so once you've got the possession in great measure and that possession in great measure is not just your financial resources but your abilities your talents your knowledge once you've got it all and you've um, brought it all together then you can accomplish something really, really major. So what is that accomplishment? The, the accomplishment that goes beyond possession. Um, because with the right level of focus and discipline, um, I really do think that today you can achieve it. Okay, maybe not today, absolutely, but you can create the foundations for it. Um, you can get yourself in the right frame of mind. Um, yeah, that self-discipline is is important. Yes, you've got this energy. Um, in fact, this sort of ties in with it, this possession in great measure. It, it it ties in with actually interestingly one of the midpoints today because Saturn is aspecting the Mars Aries midpoint, and I think this this ties in quite well because Mars of a Mars Aries midpoint um, is about um, dynamic action. In the world, but Saturn is about restraint, um, restraining um, that d dynamic world orientated action, and that's kind of like the bull getting um, the board, the headboard, the board, headboard, something attached to its 
to its horns to stop itself doing an injury to make sure that uh, it uses its energy constructively and so that's maybe what the saturn on hitting the aspect in the mars aries midpoint is about um so yes um i think it's looking pretty good and with self-discipline uh, yeah we can um we can really achieve something um quite amazing um Yes, I'm being positive. I always feel a bit bad being positive. Why do I feel bad about being positive? I think the problem is about being positive um, is that uh, I I don't like this idea of over promising. Um, it, you know, it's always a problem. You know, I remember you know when I first started learning doing astrology in the, when you know in the sort of late eighties. Um, you know, I do people's charts and I'd see a Jupiter transit and I'd say, "Oh, great, you've got Jupiter transit." And I'd those were the days when I was doing written. I do all my horoscope, my forecasts were written. My my stuff was written. And I'd only been learning astrology a couple of years. And I'd be really positive about this Jupiter transits. And of course, nothing would ever happen. Um, Jupiter. Uh, and so I'm always wary about being positive um, with this kind of thing. But uh, um, yes, I think it's good. I think possession in great measure is, is the best, is the best, um, is, is, a, is a really good hexagram. So if you can really focus um if you can really focus on what you need to do, exercise some self-discipline, and don't take anything for granted, then yes, I'm, I'm pretty pretty opt optimistic. Okay, so uh, having done the I Ching, I want to return to the astrology, and I want to consider Venus in Pisces. And what I wanted to do is really very quickly look at people with Venus with Venus in Pisces and just to get an idea of the different ways in which Venus in Pisces um, can um, manifest. And I want to start off by looking at two poets. Um, so one of his poets is Langston Hughes. So Langston Hughes, he was born in 1902, I think he died in 1967, um, and he uh, he's a poet I, I'd never heard of before I came to America, and he's a really important American poet. He's a, he was um, uh, he was you know, African American. Um, I th I think I mean I think um, you know he, I think I think um, he might have been Jewish as well, but uh, he he's considered to be. Um, I think he did have a Jewish father or something. I'm not quite sure about that. Uh, but uh, he, he was a major African-American poet. Um, and I really, I really like his stuff. Um, and he was associated with the, with the Harlem Renaissance, you know, that whole cultural um, explosion in New York in the, um, in the late 20s, which is all part of the Roaring Twenties. And, of course, that cultural explosion was... Um, smashed by the great recession and it was hence he wrote this short poem called the dream deferred you know there was this great dream of um of everything that could happen and, and in terms of the black community and it just didn't happen and the recession just destroyed it all and the whole the whole dream had to be deferred until the sort of the 60s um and he has um, Venus in uh, Venus in Pisces, and he had pr probably has well. He does have Venus a Venus Mercury conjunction um, in Pisces, probably in Pisces. You can see his Mercury is at zero degrees six um, Pisces, so he could have Mercury in Aquarius. So I, I, we don't have his time of birth. Um, all we know he was born, born February the first, nineteen o two, noon in Joplin, Missouri, but. Still, he has a conjunction between Mercury and Venus. And this is a reminder that the Mercury-Venus conjunction is, um, is very creative. It's artistically creative. Um, it, it can be about being, being an artist, a writer. Okay, it can be creative in terms of business. It can be creative in quite a destructive way as we'll be seeing in other charts. Um, but that Venus in Pisces is about for, for, if you're a poet and you've got Venus in Pisces, you are going to be receptive 
to what is going on in your community and in society. Um, and I think that is reflected in his in his in his poetry. A lot of his poetry is very angry um, about uh, you know the treatment of um, African Americans in the Deep South, for example. Um, um, and you know, he, his poems and his writings were often were often about that. And he also picked up on the spirit of the times. You know, he was. I don't know whether he, I don't think he was a communist when he died, but I think in the in the twenties and thirties he was a communist, and he 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 actually wrote a poem extolling Stalin or talking about you know Star, time for time for I think he said something like time for Jesus Christ to move over, and because because he was very critical of um, uh, of Christianity, and perhaps he saw people in his community being overly impacted by christianity maybe that was you know white man's religion ultimately and um he was critical of that and he was really picking up on the spirit of the times um in the 20s and 30s when, when people really thought that stalin and the soviet union was the savior not not jesus christ um so uh yeah i would look at his poetry if you haven't if you haven't looked at it before it's um it's really interesting um and very powerful and uh, yeah, the Venus. Mer- that's that's one way in that the, which Venus Pisces, Venus in Pisces, might work. Another poet, um, a, fe- a poet that I think most people in the UK will have heard of, uh, who had Venus in Pisces, is Wilfred Owen. So Wilfred Owen was a war poet uh, in the First World War. He, um, he, you know, he had this standard. He, he, you know, Venus in Pisces is about picking up on the mood of the time. And if you, if you want to be a successful poet, you do. That's what you have to do, don't you? You have to be able to pick up on what's happening. It's not poetry. Is not some. Uh, you know, you just want to write a poem for the sake of it. Successful poetry really needs to have needs to have passion. And of course, the poets of the First World War. Um, there's certainly I don't know I mean I don't know about poets of um, other countries but uh, certainly first um, British First World War poetry was uh, you know people don't hear about Second World War poetry it's because so many people were being killed in horrible trench in trenches in the, in the First World War but it had a major impact on people and so Wilfred Owen with his Venus in Pisces he was picking up on the mood at the beginning of the First World War he was very his poems I think were quite enthusiastic it was all good the right thing to do going off to fight for your country but then by the end of the war um I suppose he you know, remembering he was he was killed in the last week of the war but at the end of the war there was this bitterness and the anger um and uh the idea that it's the whole thing was a lie and just people back in England sending people off to die and it was just it was just ghastly and what it was you know describing people dying in a gas attack and and so forth and so Venus in Pisces as with Langston Hughes uh just picking up on what was going on and I think that is very important for a poet um there is also a Venus Mercury connection here um now with Langston Hughes we had that a Venus Mercury conjunction, possibly a Venus Mercury conjunction in Pisces, but we don't know what sign Langston Hughes's Mercury was in. Um, but if you look at uh, Wilfred, uh, Wilfred Owen's chart, there is the Aries point, um, and we can see that Venus is approximately thirteen and a half uh, degrees from the Aries point. Mercury is 15 and a half degrees from the Aries point but the Aries point is within about a degree just over a degree from the Venus Mercury midpoint I think that's close enough to say that the Aries point is on the Venus Mercury midpoint Um, so you know the Aries point is the world at large Um, it's, it's the world point and Venus Mercury as a pair is about is about artistic creativity in his case poetic creativity so Aries on the Venus Mercury midpoint on the Mercury Venus midpoint is about being able to understand what's going on in the world and being able to write about it and in a way that 
other people can immediately relate to. So that's that's one aspect of um, Venus in Pisces. Now, Venus in Pisces can have a less savoury um, 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 dimension. Um, and someone who had Venus in Pisces was um, Jeffrey Epstein. Uh, so there's Jeffrey Epstein. He had a Venus-Mars conjunction in Pisces. Um, Venus can be, is about relationships. Um, Venus in Pisces, you could say someone who has Venus in Pisces can be quite charismatic. Um, there is no doubt that Jeffrey Epstein was charismatic. Uh, he had, he was able to use his wiles to um, gain a lot of very influential contacts. Um, and I think it's said that, uh, you know, he, you know, he, he set himself up as a financial wizard. Um, I don't, I don't think he was actually that good when it came to investing people's money, but he was certainly able to give the impression that he was good at investing people's money. And so that would be Venus in Pisces, able to, you know, perhaps Venus in Pisces, trine Uranus, um, coming over as uh, perhaps an exciting person. I think Prince Andrew certainly found him exciting. Um, and that Venus in Pisces is completely wound up with Mars. And so Venus in Pisces, uh, there's a lack of boundary there in his case. And so, and, but the Venus conjunct Mars is a very, is an aspect connected with sexuality. That, that's, um, it, it can be, and in, certainly in Epstein's case, it, it was connected with sexuality. And But Venus in Pisces, it's a mutable sign. It doesn't really have any, it doesn't know any limits. At least in his case, it didn't know any limits. So, with his sexual activities and his illegal sexual activities, it just totally, there was no limits. There was no sense, um, even if he didn't care about um, the people he was damaging, you would have thought he would have been concerned about getting caught. But he, it just, there was no stop, there was no stopping. There was no stopping it. So I think that might be how his Venus Pisces was working charismatic but not having any limits uh, to uh, to what he was doing in in a sexual sense because it is br it is brought together with that venus mars conjunction um another person who had a similar who has issues though perhaps who are not on the same level as jeffrey epstein was uh, harvey weinstein uh, harvey weinstein uh I, I'm, not, I'm not pronouncing it right, am I? But uh, so he has his um, Venus. He had so he also had Venus in Pisces. Now I don't really know much about Harvey Weinstein, um, but I understand that he was an incredibly successful um, film executive. That might be a positive aspect of his Venus in Pisces. Um, being able to understand what works, what doesn't work. Um, interesting, like Jeffrey Epstein, uh, Harvey, H Harvey Weinstein had Venus trine Uranus. Um, but that, that, Venus, that Venus in Pisces was perhaps able to make him successful in the world of film because he knows knew what people wanted. He knew... Perhaps he had social skills. He was able to bring to bring people together. But Venus in Venus in Pisces didn't have any limits. Um, but it wasn't. I don't think it's immediately obvious from his chart. Um, at least just by looking at his Venus. I mean, his Venus is conjunct the North Node. I mean, if it was conjunct the South Node, that might have made sense. But Venus conjunct the North Node. Um, you know, the North Node is where we're supposed to be going. Um, I, I suppose Venus conjunct the North Node in the fourth house would indicate someone who 
shouldn't be so focused on their public profile. Yes, it's easy for him to be successful. Um, that's one way of looking at it. But um, Venus, uh, Venus in Pisces clearly in his case uh, went wrong. Um, and like uh, with Jeffrey Epstein, there were no boundaries and he had no sense of uh, not just moral boundaries, but legal boundaries. So once once the moral boundaries go, the legal boundaries go as well. And he does things that uh, are both illegal and immoral and ends up in prison like Jeffrey Epstein. So that is a way that Venus, um, that Venus in Pisces could work. And maybe it's maybe it's connected with the fact that 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 Harvey Weinstein's Venus in Pisces was um, trine um, Uranus in Cancer. I mean, I'm sure there are going to be other things in the chart, but I didn't want to I didn't want to look in detail at these charts. I just wanted to point out that these two men, Jeffrey Epstein and Harvey Weinstein, they both had Venus in Pisces, and I think certainly with hindsight we can see how Venus in Pisces might have been might have been working in a negative sense. Um, so Venus in Pisces, uh, as we saw with with Harvey Weinstein, is can be connected with perhaps knowing what people want. And so it could be connected with music. I mean, Venus in Pisces, you would think is is quite an artistic and musical place for Venus. And Venus is about um, the arts um, could be about music, um, soft music, uh, Venus in Pisces. Yes, uh, so it's not surprising that there are that we might see. Uh, you know, George Harrison had um, Venus in Pisces, um, Venus at twenty nine Pisces. Um, so clearly. George Harrison was um, obviously a super successful musician through his um, uh, through the Beatles um, and uh, Venus in Pisces might also have this sort of otherworldly sense. I mean, it's it's you know Venus the opposite position, the opposite sign for Venus in Pisces would be Venus in Virgo. You know, like Venus in Virgo can be over is in its detriment in Virgo because it's sort of over connected, over you know, it's obsessed with sort of material details and um uh, you can't, it can't let go. Clearly George Harrison with Venus in Pisces was able to let go and it wasn't just the music that was important to him. Um he was also uh, um involved with film um and was I think a lot of his films, the films he was involved with, were very successful. Um, but he has Venus opposition Neptune. Um, so that Venus in Pisces opposition Neptune um, could be a disadvantage in many ways. But if you're involved in music, maybe that is a, that is a really good way to um, use the energies of um, Venus, you know, of Venus and Neptune. Um, uh, I don't know. I mean, is it tempting to suggest perhaps that we could link? I think he died of, he died, did he die of lung cancer? He died, of, I think, of a smoking-related uh, disease. I think it was lung cancer. Um, but he smoked a lot. He he was, yeah, he was a really, really heavy smoker. And I think that led to his very early death. Um, Venus, in, So Venus in Pisces, opposition Neptune, it is possible that one might relate him smoking a lot, feeling something has to be, feeling that he needs to just uh, breathe something in, breathe that smoke in, you know. Uh, that could be quite Neptunian, Venus opposition Neptune. We should also notice that his Venus is right at the end of um, Pisces. It's close to Skeet which is a uh, malefic fixed star often associated with shipwrecks. Um, so maybe that Venus opposition Neptune has a link to his, um, to his smoking. Uh, I'm not going to say, uh, well, at least to, to the smoking that eventually um, killed him. I, I mean, again, I'm not looking into this chart in detail. I just want to sort of quickly um, go over it. Another person uh, who... 
has got Venus in Pisces is um, Victoria Beckham. So um, whatever you think of her, clearly she's was a very successful uh well, she was a, a, a very successful musician, you know, obviously with the Spice Girls um, or singer, um, maybe. Um, and so she was successful with the Spice Girls. She was very much able to plug into what's going on in the world around her. And that, I think, is Venus in Pisces. Um, Venus in Pisces knows what's, what's going on in the world at, an intu- at, a, at a feeling level. Um, and she's got Venus. Uh, she's got Venus Jupiter conjunction in Pisces. Now, Venus Jupiter conjunction in Pisces is really lucky. Um, Jupiter rules um, Pisces. Um, Venus is exalted in Pisces. When you've got two benefics together like that, they are helping each other. So that Venus is given a real boost by Jupiter, and. Um, uh, that must have helped her understand what's going on in, from in, in from a, a musical perspective. I suppose it made sure that she was in the right place at the right time. And of course, after that, she's got involved in you know being a celebrity and fashion and whatever. And so she's and you know she you know she even made she she, she even made the right choice right, right choice in terms of um, David Beckham. I mean, right choice certainly in terms of. Um, boosting her celebrity um knowing that david you know david beckham was uh, you know manchester united and he, he was he was a superstar in england before um before they got married so she made all the right choices she knew what was she knew what was necessary and i think that venus pisces conjunct jupiter yes is is really lucky i notice that her venus is square neptune so um george harrison I had Venus opposition Neptune. She had Venus square Neptune. So in many cases, that Venus square Neptune might have been a problem. But I suppose if you get involved in music, in the music, in music, then um, that Venus square Neptune might actually be um, might actually be something of um, an advantage. Um, another person who less fortunate, a lot less fortunate, who tried his hand at making films was uh, Dodie Fired. Um, I don't have uh, D- Dodie, Dodie Fired. So this is Dodie Fired's chart. So Dodie Fired, remember, is, he, I think he had this relationship with Princess Diana and he died in the same car as her. Um, uh, I mean, there's something of a pl- playboy image about D- Dodie Fired. I haven't gone into his biography. I don't know to what extent he was a playboy. Um, but it, his father was um, obviously very rich. Um, and yes, he had Venus in Pisces. Um, Venus at Venus at 20 Pisces. I mean, it was trine Saturn. Um, but it was conjunct the nodes. Um, and it's trine Jupiter. So Dodie Fired had a grand trine involving Venus in Pisces, Jupiter in Cancer, and Saturn in Scorpio. Now, that Venus trine Jupiter... um, Venus trine Jupiter can actually be quite lazy. Uh, You can just drift with the flow. I mean, I'm saying it as someone who's got Venus trine Jupiter. You just get... you, you, You know... Time just passes. Um, um, you know, my Venus trying Jupiter is in the opposite signs. I've got Venus in Cancer trying Jupiter in Pisces. But you can just drift. Um, you can drift for years. It can, it can be difficult having Venus trying Jupiter. Um, but there may be something a little indulgent about that Venus trying Jupiter. I mean, you'd expect Saturn to moderate it. Um, just going with the flow... Princess Diana getting in a car, you know, just going through the tunnel. Let let the, you know, let the um, let the chauffeur make the decisions. And that Venus in Pisces is square. It, no, it's not square as nodes. Um, but it, that Venus is trying his Uranus, um, and you know that may say something about his death. Maybe you know, maybe if he'd been hadn't been such a playboy, maybe if he'd 
if he'd been a bit more focused and a bit more serious and maybe uh, the universe wouldn't have decided that it was to to terminate his life early i i'm not quite sure how that works we shouldn't make presumptions like that um but anyway Dodi Fayad um, did have um, Venus um, trine, um, had Venus in Pisces. Now, it's easy with Venus in Pisces to think about it in terms of of art or films or, in the case of... um, uh, Harvey uh, Harvey Weinstein and Jeffrey Epstein to see it in uh, see it in terms of boundaries getting dissolved and doing stuff that is immoral and um, illegal and criminal. Um, you can see that, but what about from a more serious perspective? Um, uh, people do you know using using that intuition to function on a political level uh so we could take uh a dogan i know that the, he's the turkish president uh so he was born february 26 1954 in istanbul i don't have um i don't have the time of birth for a Erdo- dogan but he does have venus in pisces um conjunct mercury a venus conjunct mercury in pisces um in his own way very talented but he's using his venus in pisces perhaps for political manipulation he understands his country turkey he understands he may not be popular in all you know in, in across the board i think half of people probably half the people in turkey can't stand him but he does win elections he understands what needs to be done to win elections so venus in pisces is able to tap into the, the if you like the collective unconscious of the turkish people and do enough uh, to get elected okay some people might say that he's um doing stuff that's um uh not strictly speaking um appropriate using taking advantage of the power of the state to win elections that's true taking into a, also manipulating um islamic feeling in turkey to leverage that for political gain but that's venus in pisces that's how venus in pisces works it can be um it can be very manipulative and can be successfully manipulative um and venus in pisces might also help you if you are in a conflict uh so george washington uh um george washington was a pisces uh born on february 22nd 1732 10 a.m in westmoreland in virginia um he has his venus 29 pisces and so i suppose if you want to be a successful military leader it might help if you can just have an understanding of what you should i mean i don't know anything really about the revolutionary war um but i do know that he won it um but you just might have an insight into the enemy venus in pisces and perhaps an insight into what the enemy is going to do um and it might make you an effective general it's also venus in pisces you george washington you've got to you've got to lead a coalition of people uh, in order to defeat the british and you've also got to get on with other people outside like the french and so venus in pisces um gives you the sensitivity to perhaps to be successful at war and in politics so like odogan i'm not comparing george washington and odogan but uh, um um you do need that kind of sensitivity now he does have venus conjunct skeet um an unfortunate fixed star um like um george harrison but i maybe it's mitigated by the fact that his venus and jupiter are in mutual reception i mean he's got venus in the sign of jupiter jupiter's in the sign of venus so that mutual reception between venus and jupiter might have um might have helped um george george washington um 
someone el- another person connected with the military is the uh is um who was killed on the orders of of trump was uh Kazim Soleimani. So he was killed, I think, in Baghdad airport by Trump uh, ordered a was it a drone strike or something. He has Venus and Pisces conjunct Mercury. Again, very creative, not artistic creativity or literary literary creativity, but military creativity. Um, he is an Iranian general who was incredibly successful at. Um, forging an alliance and remember george washington had venus in pisces george washington had to forge alliances venus in pisces um was able to forge an alliance involving you know help forge you know you know he had there were you know iran friendly uh, militias in lebanon and then the houthis um, and in iraq and so that venus in pisces gave him um an intuition about what needed to be done in terms of defeating ISIS. You know, I know we always think that the Americans defeated ISIS. Well, the Iranians were up against ISIS and the Iranians went a long way towards defeating ISIS. And so Hazim Soleimani, um, maybe in his own way, was a military genius. And that's perhaps why um, the Americans decided to assassinate him. Now, Kazim Soleimani was born on March the 11th, um, 1957. And Osama bin Laden uh, was born on March the 10th, 1957. So these two thorns in America's side, um, who were leaders, I, mean, I think, with... Hosame, uh, with um, um, uh, with Soleimani, it was sort of the Iranian Revolutionary Guards, I think. But with Osama bin Laden, you know, it's Al Qaeda, and he had Venus. He had Venus in Pisces. Venus in Pisces conjunct Mercury. Um, we don't. I don't know the time of birth for uh, Osama bin Laden. Uh, but so for him, that Venus Mercury conjunction is the create perhaps the creativity of. I mean, I know it's a perverse creativity, uh, perhaps of of destroying the twin towers now i do understand and look to the comment a lot of people do think that um he had nothing to do with the twin towers i'm sorry i i do think he i, I mean i do think it i'm i'm i do think he was responsible and i think that uh, that mercury venus conjunction is about that um is about the about the creative the creativity the perverse creativity of being a terrorist leader um and he had Venus in Pisces, and he was able to form a coalition. He was able to take advantage of the opportunities that came his way. Of course, he was created by um, the United States when he was fighting the Soviets in Afghanistan. So, um, yes, I think the Venus in Pisces, we can see how it's working. Um, so that's it for Venus in Pisces. I've just looked at a lot of charts with Venus in Pisces, and I've and I know these are completely cherry-picked thing, pick charts, um, but I just think that they show the different ways in which Venus and Pisces might work. Venus and Pisces can be can be poetic because it can pick up on and it can make. Okay, yeah, sure, anyone can write poetry, um, but is your poetry going to make sense? Is it going to make sense to a wider audience? Uh, is it going to is it going to be hitting the spirit of the times. That's what Venus in Pisces can understand. Um, And I think that's perhaps part of the success of Langston Hughes and Wilfred Owen as those two poets um, with um, Venus in Pisces. And as we can see, if you if you want to be successful, you've whether it's, you know, whether it's in music, whether you want to be a military leader, political leader, it does understand, it does really help to understand the peop- the spirit of the times, and it uh, does understand, help to understand the collective unconscious. And I think Venus in Pisces really does help one um, to do that. Okay, that's uh, Venus in Pisces. Uh, I hope you found that interesting. Um, if you yeah, if you like this video, um, I would of course be grateful if you were to indicate that by pressing the like button if you like the video and you're not subscribed i would of course be grateful if you were to subscribe if you want to buy me a coffee um, there is a link in the description so thank you very much for listening and i will talk to you again
tomorrow.